Arlington has won the Super 8 Massachusetts State Championship. Okay, welcome Arlington sports fans. This is Sam Kafferson coming to you from the pit at Arlington High School in what will probably be the biggest match of the year for the Spy Ponders. Uh, they will be taking on Winchester. They have not defeated Winchester in seven years. Winchester has been the perennial champion of the Liberty Division of the Middlesex League. Arlington moved into the Middlesex League seven years ago have often beaten every other team in the league except for Winchester. There's a real possibility that Arlington could upset Winchester tonight. Winchester not as strong as they've been in the past. And also their perennial coach, uh, Larry Tremblay, who's the winningest coach in Massachusetts wrestling history, has left Winchester ostensibly to retire, but now he has gone over to, uh, to Melrose. So we'll be starting at 106 pounds, wrestling for the visiting Winchester squad will be Sam Cruz. Wrestling for Arlington will be Glenn Doyle. Glenn's a freshman. He's been uh, on the injury list for the last couple weeks, but now he's back in action. Oh, Doyle takes him with a head and arm throw right off the whistle. That was, that was a pretty aggressive move. Trying to get the uh, scissors there. Now he's got it. And there's a pin. Wow, that's a great start for uh, Arlington. They will open with 6 to nothing lead. Um, and a nice, nice win by Glenn Doyle. Very surprising how quickly he scored that. The next match will be at 113 pounds. Um, wrestling for Winchester will be Noah, Caff Noah Cafferty. And wrestling for Arlington will be Noe Romero. Noe is a junior. He's had an outstanding season. Uh, recently won the Belmont Tournament at this weight class. Was, was a JV wrestler last year, had a few varsity bouts, but really came along this year. And nice takedown. Nice take. Same, similar to Doyle's, only in a different mode as the head and arm. This is a great start for Arlington. Their strength has usually been the season in the lower weights. And there's another fall. So the Spy Ponders jump out to a quick 12 to nothing lead. Clearly, the Winchester team is not as loaded as it has been in the past. Um, we now turn to 120 pounds. Wrestling for Winchester is Aaron Apostagero. And wrestling for Arlington will be Chan Kim. Kim has had a very successful season since coming in after an early season injury. He is one of only two seniors on the team. He was a third place, uh, place, uh, place winner at the sectionals last year. As I said, Arlington has never beaten Winchester in a dual meet. And Winchester has year in, year out, be one of, been one of the higher ranked teams in the state, but not this year. Um, and it seems to be the program is suffering from the loss of their uh, all-time coach, uh, Larry Trombley. Another nice throw by takedown by Kim there, gives him a two to nothing lead. Roll through looking for a uh, tilt there. Kind of a dangerous move. I'm sure the Arlington coach is not happy with Kim doing something like that. There have been occasions when he's had big leads in matches and done something like that and gotten himself in a lot of trouble. Now he's going for a basic half Nelson. So far we've seen three matches and, and Arlington has dominated all three. Kim looking for that half Nelson coming to the right side now. Our apologies to the uh, viewing audience. It's kind of a dark lighting in the, in the pit tonight. It's hard to see some of the uh, small maneuvers going on. Oh, 
Kim looking for that turnover at the edge of the mat. As soon as two of his feet go out, though, the referee will blow the whistle on this. He also, on occasion, can blow a whistle for lack of uh, action. Almost, a, almost a, an escape by Winchester there. That's the end of the first period. Winchester's choice, they've deferred, so Kim gets the selection here. I'm sure he'll go in the neutral position. Yes, he, did. Yes, he has. It's sort of his best wrestling position. He can pile up points in neutral. Pastajero coming after him. Now Kim goes for the, oh, a nice roll through. Ooh. Dangerous situation now for Kim. He's got to get his hips up. He does. And he gets thrown. Let's see if any point. No, nope. Kim retains his control on top. Great scramble there, but uh, a little bit dangerous. <clears throat> Kim's got the leg in. He got some back points. He got the pin. <coughs> so, We've gone through three matches, and Arlington has won all three by pin. Um, team score now stands at 18 to nothing. Uh, I don't know if Winchester is surprised by the energy that Arlington has brought out. But as I said earlier, Arlington's strength tends to be in the lower weight classes. This should be a great matchup. Isaac Graylin is the um, Winchester wrestler. He was the sectional champion at 113 pounds last year. His opponent from Arlington is Taisei Akatsu. Akatsu is the other senior on the team. Started the season wrestling at 132 pounds and since coming down to 128, it's been a very, very effective wrestler. Both boys looking for a hookup throw here. Nice dump by Graylin. Akatsu trying to fight over to his stomach, it looks like he, uh, Graylin got two points for the takedown, two points for the back, so that makes it four to nothing. It's going to be a tough match for Akatsu. Looking to get something going from the bottom. Akatsu looking for a turn. Graylin looking for a turn. Now Graylin. Got the half in, trying to lock some legs in as well. Katsu's got to keep his head up. If he doesn't keep his head up, he's going to get slammed with that half Nelson over and over again. Really doing a nice job of dominating on top right here. Holds a four to nothing lead with the takedown on those back points. He's definitely one of uh, Winchester's better wrestlers. That's the end of the period. No, actually, that's a stop in the action. Goat went out of bounds. Katsu would like to get at least an escape here before the period ends. He's got to get on his feet, though. Oh, nice, nice turnover. Oh, could not complete it. Could not complete it. Almost got put on his back again. Graylin pretty much dominating the action, although a couple of uh, scrambles there, anything could have happened. Katsu looking for a roll, but um, he's got to be careful. He turns onto his hip. Graylin throws that half, and he's going to be in big trouble. Trying to get some wrist control inside there on his feet now. See if he can get the one point escape. Nope, that's the end of the period. So we go to the second period. Arlington's choice, they've deferred, and Grayland's gonna take the bottom. Katsu's gonna have to get some back points here to get back into this match. Grayland immediately on his feet. Katsu trying to drop down to the leg. There's an escape. That gives Grayland a five to nothing lead. Katsu hits him with a head and arm. Boy, that's becoming the move of the night. He's got Graylin on his back. 
This could be big. This could be big. What a great turnaround. And there's a pin. Wow, what a turnaround. Down three nothing, Akauchi comes back. No, it's not a pin, actually. My fault. In the dark, it's hard to see what's going on. But it was close. Akauchi looking for a cradle here. He has it. Can he turn it over? Nice block out by Grayland. He does turn it over. He's got to get his own hips up. He's got him up. The referee's going down now, looking for that pin. This is a big turnaround. This Katsu wins this match. Could have profound effects later on. Well, he's got that cradle pretty tight. He's got a nice hook on the, on the leg. Raylan doing a nice job of uh, bridging here, but. Tatsu needs to stretch him out. It's taken a long time, but the referee is scrupulous about it. He's looking very, very closely. Katsu, and there's the fall. No, that's the end of the period. I'm sorry, my fault. That's the end of the period. It gives Akatsu three more points. He now has a five. He now has a five to three lead. And Arlington once again will choose neutral. Grayland's got to be tired from fighting off his back for so long. Goes for that dive. Akatsu has a bulldog hold right there and can't turn it over. Right now, the Arlington wrestler looks like the more energetic wrestler. Both boys have spent a substantial amount of this match on their back, but neither is pinned. I'm sure Katsu would like to hit that throw again. Good shot by Graylin, hanging on to that left leg. Katsu's got the wizard in, doing a good job of defending. Almost pancaked him. Now he's got that hip throw, great hip throw, terrific hip throw. And there's a pin, that was an amazing, amazing comeback by Akatsu. Four straight pins by Arlington puts them up 24 to nothing. And as I've said at the outset, uh, they have never beaten Winchester in dual meet. Things are gonna get a little stickier now as um, at 132 pounds. Usually the uh, Winchester wrestler would be Dion Korofalis, Corf who was a sectional champ at 126 last year. The Arlington wrestler is freshman Karsten Stenke, and Korofalos will not be wrestling here, so they're bumping him up ostensibly to wrestle against Yanni, Arlington captain Yanni Catriotis. So this is Maceo Richardson. Nice takedown by Stanky. Um, nice reversal. Stanky is a freshman, one of few freshmen in the starting lineup. Richardson, more experienced wrestler, so we'll see how this plays out. He's looking for that inside cradle, near side cradle. Stanky gets the handoff, he'll get an escape point. No, he reached up, that was a bad thing to do. Now he's gonna get put on his back. That was a rookie mistake, and he is pinned. So Winchester is working itself back in here. Arlington jumped out to a quick 24 to six lead. And it's now 24, a 24 to zero lead, and it's now 24 to six. Now comes um, 
Arlington wrestler here will be Captain Yanni Ketriotis. Ketriotis has 22 wins against three losses this season, two losses this season. And his opponent, and someone he knows very, very well, is Dion Kurafalis. They wrestled against each other in the offseason. Kurafalis, as I mentioned, sectional champion last year at 126 pounds, been wrestling at 132 this season, but um, has been bumped up to wrestle Ketriotis. Ketriotis, uh, Arlington's strongest wrestler in the middleweights. Junior captain. Did a lot of off-season wrestling. He's been a really strong wrestler this season, but this is going to be a tough match for him. Only lost two matches this season. One to uh, Haverhill, highly ranked, one of the high ranked 138s in the state. The other was in the final of the Belmont tournament to an out-of-state wrestler from East Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> Kurafal is going to come right after him. He's a very aggressive wrestler. Ketriotis trying to feel his way through with another nice shot. And that's takedown from Kurafal. As I've mentioned, um, these boys have wrestled each other in the offseason. Um, Kurafalis has had the advantage for the most part. Patriotis on his feet, looking to get that, trying to get that um, escape point, but he had to get his hips away there. Take him back to the mat before he could get the hand separation. Kurafalis maintaining a slender 2 nothing lead. Now he's digging legs in and they're out of bounds. Right now the lead stands at 24-6, but um, it's... it's Probably the case that Winchester will be stronger in the upper weights, uh, where Arlington tends to be weaker. That's the end of the first period. Kurafalis maintaining a two point lead. He chooses bottom. Ketriotis likes the leg attack, but he may have trouble getting it in against a formidable opponent like Kurafalis. Dion working for that hand control. Petrie was trying to dig the leg in. He gets it in, but he's a little bit high. This is a dangerous situation. Um, and Kurafala scores the reversal at the edge of the mat. So that's a four to nothing lead for the Winchester wrestler. And they go out of bounds. So we're halfway through the second period. This is a match of 138 pounds. Yanni Ketriotis in the unusual position of being behind. As I mentioned, he's only lost two matches this season uh, against uh, 24 wins. Been a stalwart for Arlington in the middle of the lineup all season. Got a minute left in the second period. Kurfal is doing a pretty good job of riding here. And referee inevitably will probably want at least one. Or both wrestlers for stalling because right now there's not much action going on. He also has the prerogative of just whistling and putting him back in the center and starting him from the referee's position. Yeah. 
Kurofalos has the legs in and um, basically just trying to ride Ketriotis out. Seven seconds left, the referee is calling for lack of action, calling for a restart. like Corofalos will ride this period out with a five to nothing lead. And he does. Four to nothing, sorry. Arlington's choice, and once again, they will take neutral. I think what Ketriotis would be looking for here is a throw of some sort. He's got a couple in his toolkit. Nice lateral drop, head and arm throw. But uh, Kurafal is doing a very good job of tying up his wrist. This is very traditional uh, Winchester style, tying up the wrist, then un unwrapping and going for the shot. Ketriotis looking, f looked like he was going to be able to turn the corner there, but Kurafal has caught him, and now Kurafal has another takedown, and that would give him a six to one lead. Six to zero. And as I said, he's been very, very effective on top, and Ketriotis has not been able to free himself. So right now, I think uh, mostly what the Arlington coaches will be hoping for is that there won't be a pin here. Got a minute and 10 seconds left. Ketriotis having trouble getting anything going from the bottom. He's losing six to nothing. He could get on his feet probably and hook up a throw, but right now he just can't get on his feet. After all the action in the first four matches, this one is kind of bogged down. Corofalos is doing what he has to do, which is just controlling the action on top, keeping Ketrio on the mat, keeping him from getting into that neutral position. We have 30 seconds left. Referee waving the coaches off the edge of the mat. Patriotis now in uh, emergency mode. Almost on his feet there. Kurofalos can let him go now and just let time run out. And looks like that's what he's gonna do. Uh, he's looking at the clock. He lets Patriotis go. It's six to one, but that's the end of the match. So, things are changing, uh, turning about. Now uh, the score is Arlington 24, Winchester nine, and we'll go to 145 pounds. Uh, the Winchester wrestler is Kobe Richardson, and the Arlington wrestler is sophomore Connor McGann. McGann has had a, a, a pretty successful season for First time in the varsity, very good on his feet. Right there, it looked like he had a takedown. Um, if he can get Richardson to the mat, he will have a takedown, and he does. Nice takedown. He's got to keep Richardson on the mat. Richardson reaching back, that's a perfect situation for, again, to put him on his back. Not quite. Did he get points? I'm not sure. Yes, he did. He got two back points right there. The dark lighting here, it's kind of hard to see what's going on once they get away from that circle. Uh, there's an escape by Richardson. So we've, and in a minute, we've got more action in this match in one minute than we had in the previous match in six minutes. It's not a bad situation for him again because he's very good on his feet. Looking for that takedown again. Uh-oh, 
Richardson got a nice throw by there. Um, did he get back points? No, he hasn't even got the takedown yet. And again, got a little bit lucky there. That could have been a four-point move by Richardson, but again, was able to get out in front and maintain the neutrality. Gann gets into a lot of scrambles and sometimes bad things happen. And sometimes really good things happen. So it's kind of an unpredictable force out there. Two to one right now, nice shot. Let's see if McGann can defend against it. Uh, nothing. Once again, he's able to neutralize it. He's got a possibility of a bulldog there. He's got the underhook, he's just got to get the head. And uh, they go out of bounds. So Arlington wrestler Connor McGann has a four to one advantage here going into the second period. Had takedown and back points. Richardson has chosen the bottom again, trying to hook in that western lock on the right leg, take away that stand up. Getting a little far out to the side, but he does have a cradle situation there. There's that cradle. He's got to lift the leg. The leg is key. He's got the knee up. He could step through for a Turk if he can. Not quite able to finish it off. There's the Western lock again. Trying to Get an arm bar, now he's trying the half. Now he goes back to the near side cradle. If he doesn't lift the leg, it's hard to turn it over. He's trying. Now he's looking for a power half. Power half left side, power half right side. <coughs> Switching off very effectively. Can't seem to keep the half Nelson. Now he's getting something going here. Is he going to get back points? He should come underneath and lift up the leg. Pin here would be huge for Arlington. He's got the power half again. Sometimes referred to as a three quarter Nelson. Well, he's fighting like crazy to get that back point, but he's having trouble with it. What he should do is pull in that left arm, which he has right now. Almost the end of the period, and he's holding his arm here. And that's the end of the period. And again, has a four to one lead. Go to the third period, and they will, as in the case all night, Arlington choosing neutral. They feel like their best advantage is wrestling from their feet. Pin here by McGann would be gigantic, but. Um, Richardson doing his best to fend it off. Again, looking for a dump there. He's got that overhook. Now he turns it over, and he's got Richardson on his back again. He's got the two. He's got two and two, so he's got two takedown, two back points. That makes the score eight to one. Again, kind of throwing everything at uh, Richardson. But Richardson doing his best to block it off. See if he goes back to the half Nelson. He's got it in. If he can pick up that inside leg, and lets it go. So with an eight to one lead, one of the things coaches have to be thinking about is having again let Richardson stand and then try to take him down for the eight point spread which would make it a major decision give the team four points as opposed to three with a minor decision he's gonna have to make that decision pretty soon 
8-1, 8-2, doesn't matter. Both are minor decisions, but I think McGann should have let Richardson go right here. He's, he's not gonna have enough time left. He lets him go now, but I don't think there's gonna be enough time. He's gotta go right after it. Uh, Richardson's smart, just backing up. He doesn't have any stalling calls. McGann should get out of that headlock and that collar tie and go for the shot, but he's gonna run out of time. and they're out of bounds. And I'm afraid McGann's just gonna run out of time here. He's only seven seconds left. If he was able to get a takedown and get 10 to two spread, it would be eight points and a major decision. McGann should not be locking up. He's wasting time. He's not gonna get the shot. Now he's got it, but he's gonna run out of time. And he does. So strategically, uh, Physically wrestled a terrific match, strategically not so. Uh, looked like he could have had the pin a couple times and he should have gotten the major decision. So the score now, he gives his team three more points. Arlington maintains a 27 and nine lead. We'll go to 152 pounds. And things are gonna get sort of interesting in here because both teams are gonna start juking around people. Right now, the Winchester wrestler on the mat is Jack Kinsey. Very good, experienced wrestler. And the Arlington wrestler is Dylan Fournier. Dylan is a junior. This is his first uh, varsity season. He's, had, he's been in and out of the lineup at uh, 152, 160. Kinsey has done well in a couple of tournaments this year. Kinsey with a nice takedown. And ever so slowly, Winchester is finding itself back into this meet. Not surprising, Arlington's strength is usually from 106 to 145. Then they tail off a little until they get to heavyweight. Um, Arlington's other captain, David Lopes, who would be wrestling this season 170, has been on the shelf for pretty much the entire season. And it's, as a result, Arlington has lost a lot of matches through that weight class. Lopes had been a sectional finalist last year at 160, he was looking forward to a big season, but got hurt in football and never fully recovered. <coughs> Fournier trying to get up. He's wrestling tough here, but Kinsey is a pretty experienced wrestler. All right, Fournier gets the escape, so it's two to one now. Kinsey a pretty good neutral wrestler here, so Dylan uh, has to be awake. Looking for that throw by. And he gets two. So that makes it four to one. The key for Arlington going down the home stretch is not to get pinned. If they can keep matches to single uh, minor decisions, that'll be key. Winchester has some pretty strong wrestlers coming up. Okay, we go to the second period, Arlington's choice, they've deferred. Winchester, of course, will take bottom. And a quick escape there by Kinsey. Gives Kinsey a five to one lead. Just beginning of second period. Fournier looking, looking for a takedown here. Trying to get back in the match. Needs to do something from neutral. Kinsey again with that throw by. Dylan has to get out front of that. Kinsey has a leg going. Fournier has a pretty good sprawl there. 
fighting it well, and he fights it well. Good defense there, nice counter. Kimsey's going to keep coming after him, though, and there he goes. Nice, nice smash double. Makes it six to one, and uh, Fournier is going to have to get something going on the bottom here. Kinsey gets control of that left arm right off the whistle. It's pretty hard to free yourself from the bottom when that happens. seem to be, well, I was going to say not working for a pin, but he does have that power half, but he's not coming off the hip. Now he's trying to get back points with the leg ride. I don't think he got 28 over quite enough. He's got to break that 90 degree angle to get some back points. Okay, short time left in the second period. Kinsey with a fairly dominating performance so far, and that's the end of the period. Arlington once again choosing neutral and understandable. They've been pretty well dominated when they chose bottom. Fournier has pretty good leg attack. And there has to walk it there. He's gotten flattened out. He's got to get up on his knees. Good. He catches Kinsey coming around. He's got to detach there. Otherwise, he's going to get into some trouble. He's got his head locked down. See the referee still signaling a neutral situation. Neither wrestlers gained any advantage. All right. Fournier with an arm drag. Once again, Fournier, I mean, uh, Kinsey with an arm drag. Fournier with a pretty good response, good defense. Fournier's got to get something going here. He wants to climb back into this. Once again, you see the Winchester wrestlers trying to tie up the wrist. Very, very signature for them. Fournier losing 7-1 right now. Doing a good job of defending, but um, he, needs, he needs to get some points. There's two more, so that's a nine to one lead um, for Kinsey, which right now stands as a major decision. If it finished with that eight point spread, the Winchester wrestler would gain 14 points as opposed to three for a minor decision. Now, Dylan Fournier has to do something to erase that margin. Kinsey lets him up, so it's nine two, so he's actually taking the eight away, but I think he's looking for another takedown here, which would pretty much seal it. Fournier are doing his best not to get taken down, tying up Kinsey. Kinsey looking for that throw by again. He's worked effectively all night. Nine to three now, with short time left. Fournier with an attack, Fournier gets a takedown. Unfortunately, time runs out, but Fournier gets the takedown and the match ends 9-5, to five, so the major decision that Kinsey was looking for, uh, he lost it in this last period. So, that adds three more points to the Winchester total, and the score is now 27-12 to 12 in favor of Arlington, and we turn to 160 pounds. Now, normally, Jack, um, Patrick da Doherty, who is Winchester's best wrestler would be out on the mat at this weight class. But I have a feeling they're bumping him, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But um, Steve Rosmaneth is the Winchester wrestler, and Henri Chouette 
is the Arlington wrestler. Chouette has been wrestling at 52 most of the season. He's a sophomore, has great promise. I think what's happening here is that Winchester is holding Doherty for a, to 170 pounds with the expectation that he will be wrestling Lopes, who did warm up, weigh in, etc. But as I mentioned earlier, Lopes has been on the injury reserve list, so I, I doubt that Coach, Cumming, Coach Kevin Cummings will wrestle Lopes, and I doubt that he would wrestle him against Doherty. The definite possibility that if he did, he could get his shoulder knocked out again and that would basically finish him. Shoe out with a nice single attack, single leg attack. To get the takedown or not. Let's see. Yes, he did. So Chouette gets two nothing lead. He's got a pretty good single leg attack. Rosemith gets the escape pretty much right away. I think Chouette would prefer to wrestle in neutral. He's got that single again. He's got it up pretty high. He's got to finish that. He's got to kick him out. And he does. He's got the finish. He's now two takedowns. That's four to one in the first 40 seconds. trying to maintain control. To be honest with you, this is a very big match because Winchester will put Doherty out at 170 and then Arlington gets into its weakest part of the lineup. Here, if he can't make a good return, trying to beat him on his feet if he can. <clears throat> okay, it goes to a heel trip. And that's the period. So Chouette takes a nice 4 to 1 lead into the uh, second period. Let's see what Winchester chooses. They are going to defer. Arlington, once again, will go neutral. A smart decision here. Chouette has already scored two pretty good takedowns. You can see the disparity in the muscularity of the two boys. Chouette bumping up a weight class here. He's going for that shot again. Um, can he finish the single? Actually, oh, no, no. <laughs> He got his head caught in there, and Roseman took a head and arm on him. And he's going to get two for the takedown, two for the back points. And Chouette is in an advantageous position here, but right now the lead has turned dramatically in favor of uh, Winchester uh, with that takedown and those three back points, almost a pin. So after jumping out to a four to nothing lead, Chouette is having trouble now as Rosmanoff has a half Nelson in. A lot of time left in this period. Chouette's best uh, response right here would be to get out of bounds if he could. And he does. So, kind of an abrupt turnabout there. Chouette seemed to be dominating on his feet. And all of a sudden, he's down one point. We're uh, about midway through the second period. Really, really to Arlington's advantage if Chouette could keep this to a minor decision. Arlington's strength is not in the next three or four weight classes.
That's the end of the period. And we now go to the third period. Arlington's choice, I would imagine. They will take neutral. Nope, this, no, there's actually it's Winchester's choice. There's some confusion. I think it's Winchester's choice. I believe that they deferred. Um, so Rosemeth will take bottom. Nope, he will take neutral. This somewhat works to Arlington's advantage. Nope. More confusion. Now Rosemeth will take bottom. Okay, the Arlington wrestlers caution because his hand wasn't on the elbow, it was on the tricep. Rosemeth on his feet again. See if Chouette can get a clean return. He's struggling right now. He lets him go, so that'll give the Winchester wrestler a two-point lead early in the third period. Rosman is looking for a throw. Chouette has to get himself disciplined right now. He can, he can afford to lose by two points, but he cannot afford to get pinned. That would be a great setback for Arlington. Got a minute left here. Chouette's best uh, approach now would be to go for the uh, go for a shot, tie up the leg, get back in the match. There, there, he's done it. He's got the single. They're out of bounds. But that's what he should be doing. Staying away from the head, lock up, going for the shots. He's not, he's not in danger of having a major a major decision loss here. He shoots again. He's got to come out of that clean. He does not come out of it clean. He got bulldog. That was not good. Not that much time left, but he could have just come out of that clean. He would be okay. This is big for Winchester. This is very big for Winchester. Because, and there's the fall. 14 seconds left. That's got to hurt. That's going to hurt. Score now is 27-18. Uh, that was one that Arlington let get away. Now I'm sure that Winchester will send out Patrick Doherty here, which they've done on the expectation that Arlington, Arlington Russell will be David Lopes. There was some question about whether Doherty would be wrestling because he has had a broken hand, his first match back in a while. The Arlington wrestler is Henry Raleigh. Henry is moving up from 160 to 170. I think he's going to be overmatched here. The Darty Lopes matchup would have been pretty exciting. They faced off in the finals last year at 160 pounds in the sectionals. Um, Darty winning by a decision in a high scoring match. Excuse me, that wasn't last year. Uh, actually, Darty finished fourth last year at 170, and Lopes wrestled at 160. Next to Kurofalas, Darty's probably Winchester's most accomplished wrestler. Darty looking to open Raleigh up. Raleigh upper weight class here is simply getting overpowered. Let's go, 
And with a fall here, Winchester poked three points closer. And within three. in an unenviable position right now. Barry scores the pin. So it started out as a big lead for Arlington and slowly been eked away rode it away so now after 170 pound 170 pound class arlington's lead stands at 3 27 24. we go to 182 pound winchester wrestler is um jose is, i'm sorry the winchester wrestler is jose navis Another experienced wrestler wrestling for Arlington is uh, Josh Garner. Garner is a freshman, upper weight class from 170, 182. So this is where things are going to get sticky for Arlington. Uh, Nevis, a pretty experienced wrestler. He's second at the uh, Milford tournament this year. Is there 182 pounder in the lineup last year, so he's got the experience advantage over Garner. A fall here would put Winchester into the lead for the first time all night. So Arlington started out winning four straight pins, 24 to nothing lead. They've only won one match since, and that was McCann's decision at 145. Nice throw by Needs. Garner trying to fight off his back. He's got a nice bridge going there, but he's and Garner is pinned. So for the first time in the evening, at 182 pounds, Winchester jumps into the lead, 30 to 27. And right now, things are not looking great for Arlington. Um, 182, 195, 220 have been black holes for the team all season. We're now at 195 pounds. The um, Winchester wrestler is Ethan Cobalt, and the Arlington wrestler is Nate Pokris. The interesting thing here is neither Pokris nor Cobalt have, have wrestled at 195, or are not naturally 195. Uh, Cobalt weighed in at 179, and Pokris uh, has been wrestling at 182 all season. So Nate at least is going to have a fair matchup here. Nate's a sophomore. Once again, one of the younger wrestlers in the Arlington lineup. As you can see, there have been a bunch of sophomores and freshmen. Early in the season, the Arlington coaches figured this team was about a year away, but here they are in a match against Winchester that could very well determine the Middlesex League Liberty Division champion. Going into this match, um, Arlington is 11 and six with two ties. So they will have a winning dual meet season. Pokris looking for a head and arm throw here. He gets it. That's big, that's very big. He'll get two. And will he get back points or not? He lo and he loses it, unfortunately. Now he's on his back. <laughs> oh my, things just go from bad, from good to bad. Pokus got his shoulder up, he's turning over, and he's 
going to salvage something there. So he goes from a five-point move to a five-point move. Uh, or a reversal and three back points. Parker has the leg. He needs to get something going here. Had a nice start, but he's put himself in trouble. Now there's some confusion about the uh, score. Nope. Arlington's choice. Arlington has chosen to defer. Defer. Winchester, no doubt, will go down. Nope. They've chosen to go neutral. No, nope, they've gone down. They've chosen to take top. Interesting decision. Pope is trying to get up on his feet. This is a key match. It's a good matchup for Nate, but um, for the first time in a couple of weeks, he's not been wrestling somebody stronger than him. Winchester wrestler has a 5-2 to two lead, although Pokers hit that nice head and arm for the takedown. He did not get any back points. Winchester does have wrestlers in the final two matches, one of whom is quite good. At, and, uh, not too clear about their heavyweight. Pokers has a head and arm. It looks like he has a bulldog here. See if he can capitalize on it. Takes it to the mat, does what he has to, taking his opponent over. This is big. This is very big. He's climbed within one. It looks like he's having the, he has the pin. He has the pin. That is giant. <laughs> Not only does it put Arlington back, back in the lead at 33-30, but it means that even if they lose one of the last two contests, they have their ace in the hole, Charles Gillis, available. Let's see what happens. We're going to 220. Okay. Winchester's put out... Brendan Gill, who has weighed in at 221, but has wrestled heavyweight for them almost all season. And the Arlington wrestler is Mike Pesarides. Pesarides gets a nice takedown there. Gill gets the reversal. Pesarides on his back. Pin here puts the pin here puts Winchester back in the lead. So the lead gets bounced back and forth. It's now 36-33 in favor of Winchester. Pesarides just a sophomore. Now we go to heavyweight. This is the side. The Winchester wrestler is Nick Foriano, weighed in at 253 pounds. The Arlington wrestler is Charles Gillis, weighs in at about 220, sometimes even less. Gillis with a nice double leg takedown. The Gillis pin here will ice the meat for Arlington. He's got that power half in. Gillis is a strong man. Let's see if he can get his guy over. If he gets him over, I think he'll finish him. Running that power half, using his hips. He's going after it. This is it. This is it for Arlington. This is the win right here. Lewis got his weight on him. Plenty of time left. Gillis lifts up the head. 
That'll be it. Referee very scrupulous now. The whole beat is on the line right here. And there's the fall. Charles Gillis has won the match for Arlington. So for the first time in seven years, Arlington defeats Winchester by a score of 39 to 36. Despite the darkness, you cannot see the jubilance on the Arlington bench, but um, this is a very, very important um, conclusion. And it puts Arlington in line for the Middlesex League Liberty Division Championship. All they have to do now is beat Belmont next Wednesday and they will be the champs for the first time since coming over to the Middlesex League. This is Sam Cafferson uh, coming to you from the pit at Arlington High School. A very, very exciting night of wrestling. Thank you all for watching.